with Mark White from AVT. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? I'm really well, thank you. I hear you've just taken on responsibilities for Singapore, for AVT, and I just wanted to get a little bit of background. What's your history with the company and what's your current job function? All right, well, look, uh, thanks very much for the chance to say hi. Um, my name is Mark White. I'm an Australian, and I joined AVT's board, board of directors for the entire group last year in August. Um, absolutely know nothing about AV. Uh, so I, I like to joke with Graham Evans, our chief executive, I can barely spell it. Um, I'm a software guy, and previously I had uh, uh, started my own software business, uh, focused on mobile and telecommunications, uh, which we, we, we had a trade sale in uh, March of 2018. And it was kind of opportunistic a little bit to look at look at a different space. Um, working with a with AVT's board, uh, one became, couple of things became really interesting to me. One is that the industry is really a bit of an inflection point. What was you know traditionally uh, vertically integrated black boxes is slowly becoming augmented by software. And there's a bunch of reasons for that. Sometimes it's cost, sometimes it's functionality, sometimes it's just to create a better user experience. Sometimes it's to create a lower cost getting that user experience and a customer endpoint. Um, my, the role I play at AVT across the group has really got two different areas. One is software. And uh, that's how I, as I was doing more and more at a board level, looking at the different products and the strategies, um, the, uh, the rest of the board and the, the owners and the chief executive said, why don't you come on board and come full time? So as of April this year, I've joined uh, AVT full time as an executive director. Um, still with the software mandate across the entire group, but with the interesting sort of remit of relocating to Singapore and uh, helping grow and expand our uh, team up there, which ABT in Australia is 30, and New Zealand is 32 years old. In Singapore, it's 14 months. Um, so I'm really excited by the chance to look at both in this change in area, this transition area, be able to bring um, sort of things I know about software and managed services and cloud into AV. And so it's really, it's a really exciting time to be here. Yeah, and it's really interesting that AVT actually represents a number of software services across Asia Pacific. Triple Play being one, where you work in conjunction with a manufacturer and AdMobilize. Tell us a bit more about what your plans are for these software services. Well, look, in Australia, which is still a lot, the largest, Australia, New Zealand, the largest part of our business, we are absolutely uh, focused on the Harman range of products, AMX, JBL, video, audio, and that's, that's still a really big part of our business. But we've also been working with Triple Play. Uh, Triple Play are one of the leaders in IPTV and digital signage, and we've been augmenting their team in Australia for a couple of years now, and really started to get a bit of lift off in terms of helping our channel partners and mostly end users understand the things they can really do with digital signage. It's not just hang a screen on the wall and stick a USB in it and have a pretty picture there. It's something they can actually use as part of their business in a dynamic way, in an interactive way. So working with, ad, with, with Triple Play, is a really natural extension to say, well, that's one of our partners now in Asia. And we work with the Triple Play team in Singapore, but right around the region, really focused on hospitality um, and a couple of other verticals, uh, as well as just corporate usage. So that's, that's kind of interesting. Augmenting that is AdMobilize. AdMobilize is all about uh, audience engagement analytics. Um, really interesting way of taking a stream from a video camera and analyzing that stream, providing real-time data about you know what age, gender, time in this particular place, what they were actually focused on, and also whether they were happy when they were doing it, you know, sort of their mood at the time, which is kind of a pretty interesting thing in markets in, in Asia, which is very heavily focused on retail. Now, companies can spend an awful lot of money in a retail space to make it look bright and colorful, but how do they know they're actually driving, the, using that to drive purchasing intent or purchasing power? We can start to measure some of that stuff in real time, create very interesting solutions, and again, you start to see a sense where in that particular environment, having something like AdMobilize start to trigger things we can do with Triple Play, you start to see it's not just one plus one equals two, but one plus one starts to equals three. And the other exciting thing we're doing in, in Asia particularly, as well as Australia and New Zealand, um, software control and management for AV platforms. Um, traditionally, again, moving from that vertically integrated stack of black boxes which are in the room, to something which is more software driven, software controlled, wanting to create a better user and better end user experience, um, you start to look at, well, you know, working that, that platform around the region. We're getting a lot of interest in environments that have uh, certainly both Harman and MX legacy products, which we're very, very good at and love, but also other environments where you can add that utility layer of the top and start to create better visibility, uh, utilization of the room, the, the uptime of the room, 
notifications if a particular device is out and alert. So management of that of that overall AV infrastructure, um, as well as just creating a much better from a control environment, uh, you know, user experience because it's all HTML5 things we know about in the software world. We can, we don't have to do any custom programming to create a room environment that's really cool and integrated with things like Zoom and Cisco and, and other areas like that. So again, working with our partners, working with our, both our solution partners and our integrators and end, end users to be able to create really cool AV environments that use the best of whether it's software or hardware. But it's all about that integration, that engagement. And again, with that legacy of doing this for 32 years in Australia, we've got tons and tons and tons of smart, really, really talented and experienced people in AV applying that software knowledge, doing stuff that's really cool. And that's, our, that's the excitement we're doing around the region. So it's really interesting to be here this week and, and meet lots of people. It's been great. And is it right to categorize your appointment and the setting up of shop in Singapore as, as phase one? Of, of a Look, I, absolutely. It's a beachhead. Um, my role over the next few years is really to uh, expand the team. Um, we're looking at uh, obviously growing our business, uh, getting some really, again, the reference wins in particular categories, particular markets. Um, establishing other offices around the region is something we're focused on. Uh, and also, it's, it's, we've always been a value-added distributor. We don't just ship products to our, to our channel partners. We actually try and add value to their business. So one of the things we think we can do with the software realm, and again, from my background, we're actually taking them to a point where software isn't necessarily a product they just plug in. Software is a tool they can use to create better end user experiences. So trying to assist not just in helping them integrate the products, but helping them solutionize and come up with the ideas for how a particular product can, can go into a particular market segment, be it a hotel or a stadia, what you can leverage from having that better software control experience. Um, it's a pretty exciting time. And so we're, again, we're not just looking to grow the business, we're helping to grow our partner's business in the region. Um, and again, I think software is key. There will always be the endpoints in the room, the audio, the video, the microphones, and so yeah, that, that there will always be elements of physical hardware in a room. And we're looking to basically try and use different ways to use software to make that just a better experience, in what, regardless of the space. And that's pretty exciting. And coming into the industry with a set of fresh eyes, so to speak, yeah, are okay. there any idiosyncrasies you've seen, any nuances, something that you feel that the industry is just doing completely backwards? Look, I think the, again, uh, and I, I'm respectfully coming in with a new set of <laughs> eyes because AVs are a very specialized and, and generally really well performing industry. Um, I think we're seeing a lot more maturity in the way that user experiences for AV are improving in corporates and being able to, being able to kind of be a step ahead of what the customers want to actually show them AV isn't something that just means a broken TV and a HDMI cable in a corporate environment, in a, in a hospitality environment. It isn't just a set of static screens that get changed once a month as a cycle. You can actually use them as tools to help grow the business and to create better own user experiences. And I think the, the thing that I'm seeing is just starting to change, and maybe the industry we, we're hoping to drive within the industry is that sense of, well, it's not so much about business as usual now, as business changes, the speed of business changes, again, the growth in huddle spaces, for example, we're seeing companies that used to have disparate offices and or maybe cube farms are now having a lot more hot desk in and huddle spaces and remote workers and leveraging AV as tools to improve product productivity. It isn't just about connectivity anymore. It's actually being able to say, can we create a better outcome for your business by using some of these tools? And so it requires not just, okay, it's product A plus product B, but it's product A plus product B being used in this way in your environment. And that's the interesting part. And I think that that's something that I'm just starting to see the changes for. The other thing which is kind of interesting, um, in the software world, we got away a long time ago from the idea of you buy something once and you go away. Um, the, cons the consumption of AV is going to change. Yeah, so subscription-based service. Well, we start, look, and look, this is really new. Um, yep. The idea in of the AV, AV as a service is, is uh, interestingly enough, a bit of a contentious issue. <laughs> And I've certainly tried to immerse myself in the industry and learn a bit about, well, what's people's perceptions. What it really means is that, you know, the stuff we, we do in corporates with software, where no one pays, you know, X million dollars up front for licenses as a seven year or a perpetual license so much anymore. It's all about being able to improve the OPEX of the tools that you're using to improve productivity. So it becomes a manageability issue. And I think that, that consumption model, it'll come in different flavors. There's no 
you know, one size fits all. Yeah. You know, in the same way Microsoft moved from Exchange to O365, and suddenly you're paying sixteen dollars a month rather than four hundred dollars yeah. upfront. We're just seeing that change, and I think that's going to be an exciting. It's going to be exciting to see how it gets picked up in Asia, yeah. because I think you know the uh, we're seeing it in parts of the US. We've certainly done some um, AV as a service and some uh, monthly consumption models in Australia, and New Zealand, yeah. and that's been really. Sometimes you know the customers are educating us on what they actually want to do. So uh, you know, I think that's probably the thing that I see is changing the most. Again, the traditional endpoints will still be in the room. You'll have a screen or a projection device. You'll have audio. You'll have a local network, and you want some form of control over those devices. Um, but trying to find ways in which you can make that just a better and more productive experience, again in different sized meeting spaces, remote collaborators, is kind of interesting. And no, that, I, that's where I, I see the space going. I completely agree. We've seen virtualization. We've seen the yeah. abstraction of function from hardware. Yes. Where the consumer just wants the function. Yes. They're not really concerned with with the hardware as long as the hardware doesn't cause a problem. And AV is something that will go down that route. Is it's really hard. I think hard we're to starting when. to see we're starting to see a lot more focus on the end user experience rather than the little devices we're plugging together to get an experience. So trying to look at, well, not what we can do, but what could we do? And that's the thing that I see as exciting about AV now, because it is in that transition point. I think software is there. Software as a commercial model has moved to a consumption. And you're very right with virtualization. Like people, people used to buy servers and build data centers in their offices. Now it's in the cloud. And there's a, there, you know, there's, there's, there are providers for that. Um, the cost of telecommunications to facilitate that has gone down. And similarly now, we're seeing the availability of good uh, remote collaboration tools and you know, Wi-Fi, 4G, increasingly 5G everywhere is going to make that a really common thing to be able to uh, change the way that people work, change the way that people work productively, and hopefully improve their productivity through, through the use of AV. Thank so you so much for your time, Mark. Thank you very much. It was a really good chat. Awesome.